Hey guys, Mark here from Sea Wild Earth here in Japan. Uh, unfortunately for me, the last seven to ten days has been a complete washout, and, and I mean literally torrential rain. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any any end to it uh, by the forecast, um, and it's even more infuriating because during that time, I've received a shipment from the United States from the, my friendly people over in uh, Kessler Crane. Uh, it is the second shooter plus and time-lapse system a three-axis motorized six-foot-long time-lapse uh, slider um, it is an incredible piece of gear very 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 intuitive and that's what I'm going to do today uh, to break up a bit of the monotony of the weather I'm going to take you through setting up a three-axis two keyframe uh, time-lapse sequence uh, using the touchpad control that comes with the unit uh, and it's powered by a, a battery pack called the mag pack which again in itself is quite funky it's got some unique features on it now I'm very much aware that this system can be used in a number of different modes um, but uh, just for today I'm going to introduce you to the to the basic time-lapse um, menu uh, and the features that you've got available to you um, and to show you just how very quickly and very intuitively you can set up professional looking motion control moves um, with this system even without the need for a operator's manual. The menu is that simple to follow so incredibly incredibly easy so without much more ado let's dive on in let's grab the, the battery pack and the uh, and the control panel and off we go. This is the main controlling unit for the second shooter plus. It's uh, an easy, easy to navigate um, touchpad uh, that then is powered by the mag pack. Um, what I'm going to do in a controlled environment is just go through the uh, menu system for time lapse. Now, bear in mind there are different modes that you can use this equipment with, but for today, all I'm going to worry about is um, time lapse. Okay. So to power the system on, you see that there's a, an LED that comes on on the uh, mag pack on the battery and the system fires up. Okay, so you see that we get a Kessler screen come up and from there we have our first um, options, uh, whether we're going to use it as a standalone or as a master or slave. It's telling us that Wi-Fi is enabled and that the motor uh, is set to quiet okay very important if you're going to use that in a different scenario um, like a parallax move that the motor is set to quiet obviously if you're going to do a, an interview and have it have it running in the background you don't want the noise to get in the way okay um, from program move or manual move um, are the next options you can have a turntable um, option and then you can go into the main uh, system settings I'm going to do a uh, program move, so in order to get to that we press enter. It's then going to ask me or give me the option to select either two keyframes or three keyframes. Now keyframes in a time lapse um, scenario are basically going to be the start and finish position um, in a two keyframe move which I'm going to be affecting now. In order to set the keyframe I set but enter that asks me to set my first keyframe from this point using the uh, touchpad we then position the sled of the um, motion control system to the position that we want to start our time lapse now that could be with regards to the pan the amount of tilt and the location on the on the slider itself when you set the system up and you build it all completely build it where your first frame is going to be with regards to the sled on the slider that way you don't have to waste time going backwards and forwards to set a first keyframe if it's at the other end of the slider before you start for example okay so by using the touch screen we're going to locate and the the camera exactly where we want to have it once we're done with that we're happy we press enter okay it then asks us to set our second keyframe and again by using the same touchpad method uh, for position whether that be on the slider the tilt or the pan We set the second keyframe from there when we're happy we press set enter, okay 
at this time it now asks us if we want to loop and scrub that movement if it's a run once movement whether it's a time lapse or whether it's stop motion i'm going to be doing more tutorials in the future about each one of these different modes but for today i'm just going to worry about time lapse so on the touchpad we come down to time lapse and press enter and from there my next options are whether it's going to be a shoot move shoot scenario or a continuous movement scenario shoot move shoot this is relation to when the camera takes its exposure um, is it going to stop become completely stationary allow the camera shutter to actuate and then move again or is it going to affect a continual slow motion all the way through the length of the time lapse for me and personally, I prefer to shoot to know that the camera is as stable as possible when I'm shooting, irrespective of the shutter speed. Um, and obviously, um, time lapse works better with a slower as opposed to a higher shutter speed or faster shutter speed. So um, I prefer shoot, move, shoot. OK, I'm going to press enter. OK, my next options are at the top, exposure, delay, photos and runtime. OK exposure at the beginning this is um, with regards to our camera exposure what is our maximum exposure going to be uh, for this time lapse if i'm shooting a time lapse that is just in a continuous lighting set setting i know once i've done all my setup with my camera um, that my my shutter speed is going to be a 50th a 60th or whatever um, and i'll get i'll try and hit that by using nd filters to slow down uh, the shutter speed um, and once I've got that, I can then tell the, the system here and get as close as I can get to that shutter speed. Okay. So it's, if it's an eighth of a second, a sixth, a fifth, a fourth. Okay. So it goes up to a tenth of a second. Okay. You can set it to as, as close as you need to be relatively to that setting on this. But what I do normally like to have is a little bit of security. And so I'm going to have an exposure of half a second. This means that there's going to be a little bit of leeway after the shot, just for the camera to remain still and steady before it moves. OK, my delay. That is once the shutter is, is actuated, what is the delay once it's fired until the sled is moved? OK, in this case, in this scenario, uh, we press enter there. I'm going to go three seconds. If I wanted to change that, I press enter and then up or down on the keypad until I get to where I want. OK, I'm going to leave it at three seconds. OK, enter. OK, photos. Again, you figure this out when you're doing your setting up your time lapse. I'm shooting at 30 frames a second for this test. Normally, I would shoot at about 48, even 60 frames a second because I'm shooting um, 8k and I want to have as much definition as possible um, and you know a higher frame rate suits that better um, but for this test I'm going to be shooting 450 frames that at 30 frames a second that allows me a 15 second uh, final time lapse okay now with all of these parameters that I've selected so far it's telling me that my runtime to affect this particular time lapse is going to take 32 minutes and 56 seconds okay I'm happy with that runtime okay the next options i have is to set a ramp and then go into advanced features now with regards to the ramp this figure that you get in the ramp box here it's showing us 50 percent this figure that you see here is for the complete sequence okay which means you have to divide this by two in order to get the 25 percent ramp up to optimum speed at the beginning from a standstill and then your 25% down ramp at the end to a standstill position again. OK, so bear that in mind when you're setting up your time lapse. OK, um, you, again, you can change that. You go to enter and you can change that as you see fit. If you only want to have 20% of your time lapse duration used at the beginning and at the end uh, on a ramp, then you, you select 40% overall ramp time okay advanced features here okay we have start delay at the beginning pre photos and post photos okay start delay let's say for example you've got two cameras that you're setting up and you want to let one camera run 
you want to and you want to if, if you're shooting a, a, an interview or something out with, with, with another camera you're killing two birds with one stone so you're going to shoot a time lapse with this particular camera and you can set a delay from five seconds up to hours and you may be planning way ahead of your time uh, however long it is that you need to set up this camera in order for it to run and what will happen then is basically the camera is going to count down um, through that wait period and you can go up and keep on going up all the way okay for this because it's a static and I'm, I'm right here I'm not I don't need any delay so as soon as I press go when I'm ready to get the, the time lapse going the uh, camera will put itself into the position into its start position at keyframe one and off it goes okay um, so we'll enter there okay next one down is pre photos we've got a pre photos and a post photos now this allows us to enter if I'm shooting 30 frames a second for example and I want to have before we get the ramp take effect that is going from a start position I can have a static intro to the time lapse by setting a pre photos and then at the end the same uh, a post photos this may come in handy for editors for editors who don't want to have a time lapse sequence um, that immediately starts with motion okay they may want to have uh, a, a bit of leeway at the front and at the end in order to edit specifically on that start time of motion and but you know we all know what editors are like they like to have that time okay so here by putting in 30 pre and 30 post photos what I'm going to get on this particular shoot is I'm going to get 30 pre photos where it's static and there's a time lapse happening once I've reached my 30 um, pre photos it's then going to go into that 20% ramp that we put in it's going to get up to optimum speed and then it's going to go through a 20% ramp down to a static point and then it's going to have these final post photos run there okay all I then have to do is press done it's telling me that my ramp is at 40 all I need to do now is press start and what you'll see happening is it's telling me it's on its pre photo cycle okay and it's and you can tell it's doing that because the remaining time of my um, time lapse remains at zero okay so when this gets to 30 then you'll see this um, remaining time of my time lapse uh, start to count down uh, as we build in uh, as we create the time lapse once it's finished it will then go into a post photo uh, session and start to show the countdown of the 30 frames that I put in for the uh, post cycle and once it kicks into 30 once it's done it's 30 then you'll start to see the uh, remain time counting down there we go okay now you can see that the countdown time for the uh, duration is running and you can also see now that my sequence of 450 uh, images has started to take effect okay once it gets to the end of the time lapse it will go to the post photo the 30 post photos and that will be the time lapse done if for whatever reason we need to stop the uh, the time lapse from effecting we just press enter it will freeze everything okay and then when you're ready to go again you just press enter to resume and off it goes 